What's up guys, this is Inducer I here and I'm finally back for another commentary in Forza Motorsport 6. So yeah, I guess I kinda kept my promise guys, I'd keep on making as much commentaries as I can for you. And I'm here. So, so today I've decided to make a video, another video on based off the new car pack. And since that they finally added the brand new 2016 Audi R8 to the game, oh I just love this car, I decided why not compare it to its predecessor, the first generation R8? So here we got, yep, obviously the 2016 Audi R8 V10 Plus, and the old one, the 2013 Audi R8 V10 Plus. So we're just going to compare these two, take a look at them in the Forza Vista, and give them a drive. And I also did another one of these, of the Ferrari 458 and Ferrari 488. That video will be coming very soon, guys. So we're going to see, like, if the new R8 lives up and is even better than the old R8, and which we'll find out, guys. But first, we'll start off with the old R8, because... Why not? Because we go to the old one before the new one was made. Okay, so we got a speed of 7.9, handling 5.3, acceleration 8.5, which is pretty good, I guess, and a braking of 5.3. Alright, so power... We got 542 horsepower, 398 pound foot torque. So again, just like the 458, it's quite the torque is quite a bit lower than the power, which is a bit unfortunate. But hopefully they've fixed that with the new RA. We're about to find out. And we and it's got 3,682 3, pounds, so a little bit of weight there. But this is a four-wheel drive car, so that's fair. Oh, we're already in it. Okay, so now let's go in Forza Vista. Alright, so taking a look at the front, it's got a pretty charming look, I must say. Yeah, the headlights look pretty nice. So those sort of headlights were new on the 2013 R8. Same with the Ray Air Grille. Well, I don't know, maybe they did change the Ray Air Grille a bit. Like, they made the lines go across instead of all the way, so good job on that. So yeah, the headlights is what I wanted to talk about. Uh, the headlights that were used on the 2006-12 R8 were the LED headlights from the Le Mans Quattro car, I believe. But yeah, they look really nice, and the front altogether looks very charming, I must say. So opening the cargo space, which is on the front, obviously, because this is a rear engine car. Alright, so turning on these headlights. So these headlights were new to 2013. They were, These are the... Uh, Eco Innovate, they have the Eco Innovative technology, still LED, I think they look very nice. And the headlights weren't too much different on the, the second generation R8 too. So looking at the rims, they look nice and dark, nice and aggressive looking rims. I really like it, them. And a little brake caliber inside. Uh, the rear view mirror, not too much to look at. But this is what I love about the R8, how they add that, that big black stripe. Which is one of my favourite features of the R8 in terms of exterior features. And the petrol cap here looks a bit old fashioned but still looks very nice. I love the petrol cap. Very big and very, it really suits the stripe I think. And they put in a nice spot. Alright, so check in the back view. Again, it looks a little old fashioned I must say but still looks good. I like how the tail lights are right near the, the, uh, they're right near the intake vents and just like on the front. And they've been using those same intake vents since 2006 when this car was new. Alright, so this is where it gets serious in the engine. So here we are guys, this is the 5.2 liter FSI V10 Plus. So this is the only R8 that comes in V10 Plus. It also comes in V10S in Spider or Coupe. But the V10 Plus, this did not come in Spider, only in Coupe. There was also... Uh, let's just pop up the wing and taking a look at it. I like how there's a bit of like air, like air holes in the middle, not just all orange. I oh, know. So yeah. Anyway, about the engine, they also came in like they also came in two V8 options, manual and Tronic in either coupe or Spider. All right. So when you step into the interior. You will see that's very similar to the same interior they used in the 2006 R8, but it still looks very nice, and it, it still looks very nice and doesn't look too old-fashioned. But yeah, they did change the gauges a little bit. They made them look a little more sportier, and the gear stick 
I really like this gear stick. It looks very nice, very sporty. It, very nice. And I love the aluminium on the top. R8 badge. Looks really nice. Or, dual zone automatic climate control that you used on the 2006 R8. Uh, the touchscreen display, which came standard on every 2013 R8, but not standard on every 2006 model. And the air conditioning vents, they look really nice. I really like how they arch into the dashboard. The one on the far right side is smaller, but the one on the left side is bigger. So I really like this interior. And the door inserts, a lot of room for your arm there, and a big handle for the passenger to be holding on to his life. And the steering wheel, it looks very nice, but just one problem. It looks a bit big in my taste. But at least you still get that R8 badge down there. And... The paddle shifters, they're really nice. They look like kind of like some sort of weird bent teeth. I really like the paddle shifters. But just the steering wheel looks a bit too big in my taste. And the gauges look really nice, really sporty. But yeah, for a sports car, maybe they do look a tiny bit cheap. But I don't really blame the I don't really blame the car for that. But I do blame Audi, because they still could have changed it. Okay, let's listen to it. Really good roar and grunt there. Love the sound of that V10 engine, that FSI V10. Alright, so stepping out. As you can see, okay, so with the door, as you can see, there's that big handle there. Maybe a bit too big, but... And it's not really useful because the driver wouldn't be holding on for his life. He'd be more concerned in driving. Only the passenger would. Alright, so... What do I think? It looks really nice, but I think maybe the new one looks a bit nicer. But still, in terms of other, like, exterior and interior features, can it live up to that? But now we're going to drive this thing. So we're going to take it onto the drag strip and then the track. And I'll see you there, guys. Alright, so now here we are in the 2013 Audi R8 V10 Plus. So taking a quick look around it. Yeah, it looks very nice. But we've just done enough looking around in Forza Vista. So now we can just drive. Alright, so I've already recorded the video of the Ferrari 458, and by the way, sorry. Yeah, this thing had a bit of launch before, but it just slows down a bit, so pretty good launch. Alright, so when I did the video of Ferrari 458 versus 488, I didn't do this, so I'm going to decide, like, during the middle, brakes to see how fast, how fast it can break. Alright, so not the best braking there. Took a bit of time, but yeah, alright. It was like I always say, the drag strip. I used to do that on the drag strip, but about halfway I'd, I'd go as fast as I can, then brake to see how good the braking is. Because the drag strip is about speed, speed, acceleration, launch, and braking, whereas the track's about handling, performance, cornering, and also braking. Braking on corners. Maybe also speed, I don't know. Alright, so that's the drag strip, so it's quite fast. It's got fairly good launch, but then it's got pretty good launch, but not the best acceleration, not the best braking. But let's hope the new R8 can live up to it, and let's hope it can do better on the track, Hockenheim Ring. Obviously, we choose the Hockenheim Ring because it's my favourite track to race, race a German supercar in, or Le Mans, I don't know. Okay. So yeah, you get a bit of launch and then it just slows down a little, so good launch but not the best acceleration. Okay, so let's corner. Mm, that was a pretty sweet corner. No understeer. Well, I do expect a bit of understeer from this because this is all drive. But yeah, that corner pretty smoothly. Yeah, I was impressed. Alright, so, so far, braking is not as bad as I thought on the track when you're braking corners. Alright, we got a bit of understeer there, because this is a bit heavy, 3,600 pounds, and it's all-wheel drive. Look at that wing come up. So yeah, as I said, the back does look a little old-fashioned, with the black at the back and the black vent intakes. intakes. Okay. Ooh. Okay, so, I think maybe I just pushed on the brakes a little tiny bit too late there. But yeah... It's not as bad as it was on the straight line, because I, it's like, because when it, it, 
braking on the drag strip, it's average, because I've seen a car that can brake better than that. And even a car that is all drive, and about the same weight. Like, it probably brakes just as... It's probably like the Lexus RCF lacks a bit braking, but this can corner pretty well, I must say. You can even drift a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to try drifting on this corner. Ooh. Ooh. Even though we... The, we got the rear wheels in the dirt. We handled it quite well, guys. I'm pretty impressed. I am just hope and pray. I have driven the new R8. But just, I have driven the new R8 in the video, but not in a proper review like this. It was just not in a proper review or comparison video like this. Whoa. Yeah, this is quite fun to corner. May not have the best braking and acceleration, but it still drives really well. Alright, so before we move on, I'm just going to give a quick overview. So, this looks really... This is a really fascinating car. It really fascinates me. It's a very charming looking car, as you can see. And there are some features in the exterior that look really cool, like the stripe, like the side stripe, the gas cap, and yeah. And... It can drive even ju nearly just as well as it looks. So I'm really impressed. It can corner really well, but just doesn't break as well. So now we're going to hop into the new R8, and I'll see you there. Okay, so here we are in the 2016 Audi R8 V10 Plus. So this is just a really awesome looking car. I really love this. Really more aggressive look at the front than charming. And I like aggressive. Alright, so let's take a look at the stats. We've got a speed of... 8.0, as I remember, it's a bit faster than the old R8, because I think the old R8 has to be a 7.5, yep, it does, and we got a handling of 5.4, so I think the old R8 had 5.3, yes, so it's got 1% better handling, uh, we got an acceleration of 8.9, so I remember the old R8 had an acceleration of 8.5, so they've improved on both the speed and handling of the new one, so good on you, Audi, for that. And we got a braking of 5.4. So just like the old R8, same handling and braking. And only 1% better. We got 610 horsepower. And the old one we had have 542 horsepower. So we got more power. 413 pound for the torque. So they've been... So... Again, a bit disappointing. They've made the torque a bit too much less than the power. So that's a bit disappointing. Uh, so yeah, it's only got 15 more torque than the old one so a bit disappointing on the torque but at least they've done it with the power and we got the old one weighed 3,682 pounds and the new one weighs 3,428 pounds all right so let's hop into it let's have a look in Forza Vista so yeah looking at the front as I said it looks very aggressive very aggressive I really like how they changed the rear grille they made it look a little bit more like from the 2006 to 12, 2006 to 11 R8, and but they've changed the uh, intake vents. They're like right in line, a bit symmetrical with the headlights. And yes, they have changed the headlights too. Instead of the headlights that the 2013 R8 had, this, ha this has just for an LED headlights. They're not too much different, but they look more modern and more nicer. And I just love how very like curve they very symmetrical with the side of the ray air grill and when you open the front cargo space just like the 2031 rear engine and the cargo space along the front so the rims i actually prefer the rims on the old r8 because they were more darker and more aggressive looking but at least the front is the one that looks more aggressive these are more look more cheaper because they're only silver aluminium and the brake caliper at least it's a bit bigger, I, I, as I recall. And, again, and, if that side stripe in black looks really nice. They have taken it off this little section here, but they've still kept that gas cap there with the R8 badge in red this time with the red thing. So that looks very good. Very good. I don't, I'm not really sure if it looks better than the old one. I don't really know. But, I guess it matches the windows, the part at the back. So, moving on to the back. The back looks pretty nice. And the wing is 
probably the most disappointing part, which I'll explain in a minute, but at least you still get those that those intakes, the air intakes, which look really nice, and those two exhausts. But the wing is a bit disappointing. Unlike the old R8, which had the raisable wing, it just has the normal adjustable black wing. But it still looks nice. I just wish they would have made the uh, raisable one. And they still have, like, the air vents inside, which is what the raisable wing on the uh, old R8 had in the middle. I just still wish they could have had that, but at least the uh, black wing matches the stripe on the sides and the intakes. Alright, so looking in the engine, the engine overall doesn't really look as nice as the old one. And the disappointing part is that they're still using the exact same engine, the 5.2 liter FSI V10. So, 9 years since they released the first generation one, they haven't made as much changes. No changes, not really much changes with the engine. Like, not really with torque. And like only a little bit of power, but like 75 more horsepower. So looking at the inside, I like how the air conditioning vent is on the door. Really, I find that a bit of a unique feature, which is nice. And But the insert of the door doesn't have as much armor as the old one. But nevertheless, it's still good enough, decent. Looking at the center console, it's more modern. Like the gear stick, I don't know if it looks as nice. Like, it looks kind of fatter at the top. I just, I don't know what I can say. Maybe the old one and a nicer gear stick. And at the bottom part, you can see you have the little uh, thing for the, to control the uh, infotainment. And like, because the sat nav and all that now goes in the dashboard. And you got the automatic climate control, those aluminium, I don't know what they are, they look more unique, which is good, and the air conditioning vents, I like how they're on that angle, and they're kind of in the same shape as the headlights, but just a bit of a shame how um, it's not really in the same shape as the old R8, yes, these do, do, air vents do look more expensive, but I think I just prefer the shape of the old one, how, I don't know how they just curve, but the steering wheel, this looks very nice, very sporty. I love how you get the buttons, including the start-stop engine button there, just like on a Ferrari. Uh, cruise control, audio control buttons, and it's just that right behind the buttons is nothing. Because if you look on the like on the far right side, you can see there's just nothing behind it. And they're surrounded by this chrome aluminium T-shape, I don't know. Looks very nice, and still get the R8 badge at the bottom. And best thing of all, they've shrunk in the steering wheel. It doesn't look as big as the old one, because that's the only complaint I had about the steering wheel in the old one. All right, let's start it up. So even though it has the same engine, it sounds different. It sounds more monstrous, more louder, and more tougher. More muscle. More muscle. I sound. And I really like how the gauges look. The gauge up, the tachometer in the middle, and all that. So yeah, the engine definitely does sound different and better than on the old one. And it looks slightly better, but just the disappointing parts about the rims and the wing and the gear stick inside. But apart from that, it looks really good. But can it drive just as well? Or we want it to drive even better than the old one to see how much it has improved because it should have improved a lot nine years come on so we're about to find out but first to the drag strip and I'll see you there all right so in we are with new R8 so looking around it very very cute very aggressive looking oh, I love this it's just like the Audi TT RS on steroids high steroids. Oh, I really love this. I really love the headlights. They're really symmetrical with the intake vents. But, why are we looking? We've had enough of a look around in Forza Vista. I just, I just want to have one more quick look around, guys, because I cannot get over how wonderful this thing is, and I cannot get over that Forza attitude. But we'll drive now. So yeah, like I said, we do a break here. We'll start doing it from now on to focus on Acceleration, launch, speed, and braking at the drag strip. And on the track, we do handling performance cornering and also braking. So let's see if this brakes. Oh. Unfortunately, I think 
We got a breaking of 5.4 on this and a breaking of 5.3 on the old R8, but I think, unfortunately, I think the breaking on this is just as bad as the old R8. Maybe worse, I don't know. We'll find out on the track, because the track, both the drag strip and track is for breaking, but at the, so far it's just led me to a big disappointment for breaking. Let's hope, but it is still very fast, it ex unlike the old R8, unlike the old R8 where it launches and slows down, it launches off the mark and keeps that pace, sustains it, just like a runner. So, well done on that Audi, I'll give you credit for that. Alright, where's Hockenheim? There it is. Okay, so let's see how well it can do around a real racetrack. Hockenheim ring, of course. So, I also, for some reason, I, I think I also did this track in the Ferraris. That video will be coming up, hopefully, two days, I'm really hoping. But yeah, I don't know, I could have done Monza, but I just like do this, I love this track. So yeah, looking around it just one more time, guys, I promise. Okay. So, let's go. I love this sound, but very monstrous. So we nailed the first corner in the old R8, can we nail in this? Ooh. Uh, not bad. We got a little bit off the track, but not bad. Let's hope it has less over understeer than the old R8, and let's hope it doesn't break as bad. Ooh. Okay, we have either I just braked a bit too late, or maybe braking this is even worse than on the old R8. Because I'm expecting, like, well, obviously it's faster and sounds better, but I expect a little bit more from, uh, from the success that took nine years after. Well, it didn't take nine years to make it. We didn't bother releasing it nine years after the first generation. So I expect a bit more from this thing, guys. But it corners alright. Uh, oh, we went off a bit. And I probably did this on that corner. I think I did a good job, but even if I didn't, even if I if was, even if I did do the same as I did in the old R8, or I would just do a bit of drifting. Yeah, this can drift. I'll give it credit for that. It can drift. I love to, I love to imagine this thing being a good drifter. But maybe on a different track, like Venice Alps, or Monza, or, uh, I don't know. I forgot what the track's called, the track you start off with, uh, Line Rock Park, that's right. Line Rock Park. So yeah, it probably, it can drift better, but I don't really know about cornering yet. It was quite fun cornering the old R8, but I'm just finding myself slowing down a bit more. Probably just as much on this day, so it's probably not quite as fun cornering. A little bit fun, but not as fun. But at least this thing is fun, quite fun to drift, even though I do fail. or slow down a bit. But it's not as lurchy as the, uh... It's not as lurchy as the full 88 was, if I remember, and not as lurchy drifting as the Lexus RCF. But you cannot compare this car to the Lexus RCF, you can't. Alright, so final review on this car in both, and in comparison. So, this car looks awesome, it looks spectacular, and sounds spectacular, and it it's pretty fast, but braking, it's got kind of crap braking for a supercar, even though it is, uh, even though this is four-wheel drive, and it does weigh quite heavy, and it's a little bit lighter than the R8, but I think maybe than the previous R8. I think it's a tiny bit worse than the pre previous R8, and it's just not as fun to corner, so I'm a bit disappointed in that. Alright, so to, co to compare them, has, just the question, has the new R8 lived up to the old one? Sort of. But I still expected a bit more, because, like, maybe if... They maybe release the third generation. Don't wait another nine years to release the third generation Audi. Come on, you really gotta focus on your best car, Audi, really. I'm sorry, but I'm not sure if but maybe I'm just maybe I'm just saying the wrong thing. Maybe maybe I'm not shouldn't be talking to Audi. Maybe I should be talking to turn ten because maybe in real life the Audi R eight does drive much better than the old R eight, because this thing in the game only drives a little bit better. Okay, so that pretty much ends the video, so if you guys enjoyed, thank you guys for watching. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and stay tuned for more videos. And don't forget to look out for Ferrari 458 and Ferrari 488 comparison. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.